Hello, I'm Craig McLean and welcome to episode 31 of the Mark 1 Escort RS2000 Reassembly. This is the big one where we finally get to see the Escort run for the first time. But first, I want you to introduce you to somebody new to our family. So this is our latest addition. This is, uh, this is Denzel, our Shetland Sheepdog. We've been looking to get a, uh, a dog for many years and we've finally bit the bullet and gone for it now that the wife works at home so many days a week. Hello, Denzel. Hello. Hello to the camera. <laughs> Anyways, let's crack on with some of the uh, jobs that we need to progress getting the car running. And towards the end of the video, you'll hear a sound out of it for the very first time. Right, it's time to get some fluids in. The oil on the left is obviously the engine oil. That's the correct stuff from our lo local motor factors that any local garage would put in if you went for a service. That will only be going in for a short while, that stuff, because I am going to put some better stuff in after it's done a few miles. So I'm going to get maybe 500 or so miles on, and then I'm going to put some good quality stuff in. I don't know what yet, but we'll decide nearer the time. And then we've got this stuff. I actually bought mineral oil to start with, and then I had a crack with the GS lads, and they said no. He said, they said, G uh, mineral oil will probably be fine, but we use semi-synthetic, so I've swapped it for semi-synthetic uh, gearbox oil. So that's also for the diff as well, because my geared uh, limited slip diff, um, my ATB, is actually uses the same oil as a standard diff, so that'll do for both. So I've got three litres of the gear oil and five litres of the engine oil. It's time to get topping up. Right, time to start filling oils. So I'm going to start with the diff because it's a bit easier to get to than the gearbox. So I've removed the plug. I've just got to pull the cap out the top of there, fit this pipe into the hole in the casing and fill it until it starts pouring out. Basically, once it gets to the level of the plug, it will pour out and that'll tell you that you're at the correct level. I'm not going to video it because I, can, I struggle to get myself under there, never mind the camera as well. I'm leaving the car flat on the floor for obvious reasons, so we get the levels just right. So I'll get on with that now, get the plug put back in, and then we'll move on probably to engine oil and leave the nightmare to last, which I believe is going to be the gearbox because that is that just looks impossible to get at, but I'll figure some of it out. Right, in the end, this is the contraption I came up with to fill the diff. It was a bit awkward, a lot more awkward than I thought, actually. I couldn't get the funnel in. I couldn't get the pipe off this bottle in. And this was a slow process to fill it up, but it did work. In the end... I uh, I looked and the oil level, I've shown a torch in, the oil level is level with the bottom of the threads. So I think what was happening is as I was squeezing the bottle, it was forcing it out. But then as I was letting go of the bottle, it was sucking some of it back out again. So I've had a look in with the torch and it is definitely level with the bottom of the threads. If I put my finger in straight, I get oil. I get oil all over my finger. So basically it is at that level. So I'm quite happy with that now. There's our diff plug back in. And that's the diff done. We'll move on to somewhere else now. An important thing to remember as well, something I read just the other day, a lot of people maybe try and fit, uh, fill, overfill the diff, fit a little bit more oil in, thinking they're doing better for the diff. But what happens is they reckon if you overfill them, the oil transfers down the shafts and then ends up filling up your uh, your brake assemblies. It'll, it'll basically force it through uh, into your brake assemblies down, down the aft shafts. So it is important that you don't overfill it, but obviously fill it enough. So I'm fairly confident now that that is exactly where it needs to be. Right, time for the all important engine oil. Right, that's about four litres full. I'm going to leave a litre in the bottle, give it a while, maybe 10, 15 minutes, dip the oil and then uh, add as necessary. Right, we're all done. The gearbox wasn't as hard as I expected. I couldn't even see the filling hole. I could only get to it with my hand, so I thought this is going to be impossible. But I managed to get that pipe in that you've seen before that I used for the diff. I managed to feed that in and I squirted one and just over three quarters of the second bottle in and it started goozing out so i know that that's now full 
as soon as I pulled the, pulled the pipe out, it uh, got oil all over the garage floor. So I've put the, uh, the fill plug back in, tightened it up. Uh, engine oil, bit of a weird one. Uh, it's a different sump, you've got to remember. This isn't the original Ford sump on this engine. It's the Retro Ford um, cast one. I've only got about three and a half litres in it now. Um, when I left it for a while, it went right over the maximum. I've had to drain some out. I've got about three and a half litres of oil in the engine. And it's still a tad over the maximum. But what you've got to remember is the oil filter on these is vertical. So basically that will not be filled at the minute. On a mini, the you know, the face upwards, I normally fill them full of oil before I put them on, but that will be empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to leave it a while, dip it again, see how it goes. But then I'll probably just leave it as it is uh, unless it drops below the minimum. I'll leave it as it is and um I'll top it up after it's run for the first time and get it right because obviously it needs to pump the oil all around the ancillaries and everything so yeah everywhere inside that block will be pretty much dry anyways that's the fluids done all that's left now is the flammable stuff that goes in the back that those with very very few brain cells are panic buying at the minute I've also did scream wash as well just to mention uh, obviously nothing to that that's another one done uh, so where are we at in terms of having this running? Well, there's one more job I'd like to do. I could run it without it, but if I'm going to do it right, I'm going to do it right, which is the engine breathers. As you can see at the back there, that would have been the original pipe that come off the head to give you your, your breather for your, uh, for your cam cover. At the minute, it doesn't have one that's blocked off. I'm going to fit a little breather onto the side of the head here for the, for the, um, for the cam cover. And then I've got the original air box to fit onto the bottom side of the exhaust there, onto the block. And that'll be getting another little air filter. So that's next. Uh, the next jobs is to do them, two breathers, get that finished. Uh, and then it's pretty much ready to fire a battery on it. Let's make sure we have some oil pressure first, obviously. And hopefully, in the, uh, well, it'll be in this episode for you guys. It'll be a couple of days for me, maybe not a week. I'll hopefully have a tune out of it. So yeah, it's getting very, very close. Right, a little job I've just done today. This is the old strut. This is the front Bilstein strut that we were sure was bent. Now I've got the new one on. Thanks very much to Kevin Paul for sorting this out for me. And I don't know if, you, if it shows up very well on camera, but that is now shown up in reality as having a bend in it. See if I can get you, I think you can see it on camera. It does have a bend in it. And now I've swapped it over for the other one. I've actually got the perfect amount of camber with the top um, adjustable mount in the right place. It, right away, it was a massive difference. The gap between the inside edge of the rim of the wheel and the strut was the same as the passenger side. Whereas this side, uh, prior, it was... It was a tiny, tiny gap because basically the wheel had that much negative camber on it due to the bend in the strut that you simply couldn't um, adjust yourself out of it, even with the, the top mount at maximum um, measurement, uh, sorry, at maximum, um, you know, if it was adjusted maximum one way or the other, you could not get the amount, the right amount of camber. So we've now finally sorted that. I'm going to send this back to Kevin because there's bits on it he'll probably be able to uh, to reuse. But I'm chuffed to bits to get that little issue out the way. So following on from the last video, we may as well go back to our list and cross off the part that we've just fitted. And that can be took off the list now. Take that off. I have now just received... Um, actually, we can, uh, we can cross off fill engine oil a different gearbox that is also done i've just received the bauhaus and grommet that was missing some other bits and bobs um these parts here I they didn't have um fan resistor for the second speed on the fan but they did have a firebox for the z-tech or st uh, grommets for the rear shackles bits and bobs i'm going to get fitted shortly little things i'd forgot about um, so we'll get on to them uh, items just next. A little bit of a parts update, most of which have come from GSS Coats. So this here is a little air box, like, or oh, firebox that goes on the side of the block. 
This is for your engine breathers. Uh, I've also got two of these little filters here, really small filters, one of which is already fitted onto the cam cover, which I'll show you in a second. That um, air box or fire box has come with the bolts. I've got the two grommets. This is something I've missed out. These are the grommets that go in your boot floor on, or the, the uh, tank well and the uh, wheel well for access to the bolts on your spring shackles. They go in there. I spotted that they were missing when I was doing a bit of a thorough inspection of the car, making sure I hadn't missed anything. This is the other Bellhausen grommet from the last video that I only had one of. I've now got two. And this is the one that will please most people. I'm going to get rid of them 1990s Max Power Fantastic pedal covers today and put the proper original rubber ones on. So anyways, let me show you just where I fitted that other little filter. Oh, and not forgetting... This is one of the, just this is just a spare, but this is the hose barb fitting with the proper BSP nut that I've used to fit that little air filter into the cam cover. I basically went for 12 mil opening on them little filters, which is kind of as big as you go before these hose barbs start to get ridiculously big. But I'll show you that just now. And there is the little filter there in the side of the cam cover to act as a breather where it would have originally been at the back there, at the back of the head. Obviously, that's not far off the bulkhead bubble, so I've now moved it to the side. Just something to bear in mind, underneath this side of the cam cover only is a little baffle plate, which stops oil and stuff flicking up from the cams. So if you would put that filter in the other side, there's a chance that you could end up getting oil building up inside that little filter, which it will anyways over time. You'll get a little bit of oily residue. But by putting it there, there's less chance than it is by putting it on the other side. And you'll probably notice there that the cam cover has reacted again. This is the second time it's happened. It's because the cam cover is made of magnesium. And I've now had it professionally painted twice. And it starts reacting after a number of months. Or in this case, I think it was weeks. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with that for now. I'm just going to live with it. But it is something I need to address at a later date. Anyways, let's crack on with some of them little jobs. Now, here's something people will really be glad to see the back of. And just like that, they are gone. That looks so much better for a car of this type. Don't get me wrong. In the right application, a decent set of these can make a big difference. I, I like them on certain things. I've got a better quality set of these on the Mini Sparko. They look really smart on the Mini but this is a classic Ford Escort. It's not meant for 1990s pedal covers and, and stuff like that. It just suits better originality when it comes to little things like that, in my opinion. So that's them gone. Bit of a bugger to fit, actually, because they're brand new hard rubber. So to get them to push in was, uh, you know, plays havoc with your thumbs. But it's done now. That's another little uh, job out the way and one in which I've been meaning to get done for quite some time. So, another couple of things to cross off the list. Bellows and Gromit. Last one, done. That was easy enough. Uh, we're still waiting for the indicator stalk. That's one thing I know I'm waiting to come in for last on the list. Um, the firebox I'm going to clean up now. Fan resistor, didn't have one in stock. I'll have to look for one of them. Gromit's for shackles. So, I've actually done the two of them now. Quite awkward to get in, but done. Yes, Grummet for Bellhouse, and that was just for my order list. That's done as well. And rubber pedal covers. Also done. So all we've got left to do is the air box, the, the little air filter I've just showed you. Um, I need a fan resistor at a later date, and I'm going to put some fuel in it this weekend. Ready for start-up. And after a bit of TLC... That's our little firebox rubbed down and repainted in satin black. I'm just going to make a new gasket for that now, get it fitted and fit the little air filter. There you can see the little air box fitted and the little air filter attached to it. The uh, air filter attaches to a little one-way valve, which uh, I've took the GSS Coat Lads advice and I've knocked the centre out of that one-way valve just to make it a straight-through connector. So that allow it to breathe a bit better. Fitted the little air filter you can just see there. Uh, and as you can see, look how close this little air box is to the engine mount. It's actually the, the top lip 
of the uh, of the engine mount actually touches the airbox, but thankfully doesn't stop it tightening down onto the flange on the block. But yeah, that's now done, and we'll just have to hope that it uh, has the desired effect. You know you're getting close to firing a car up when you get to this stage. Right, a little bit of an update. Put the fuel in, touch wood, there's no leaks on the fuel system. But what I have just done is I've just undone that uh, blank on the end of the fuel rail, put a rag under it, ran the fuel pump. It took two, because what happens is when you turn the ignition on, the Omex ECU primes the pump for about maybe two seconds or so. So I primed it the first time, nothing come out. Primed it the second time, we've got a gush of fuel. So I've got a good supply of fuel to the fuel rail now. And this is the way, unfortunately, I'm going to have to do it. I haven't got the battery for the car yet, so I'm using jump leads down to... It won't be the little battery. I'll have to charge the big battery. I think the big battery will be much more capable. But we'll uh, we'll get on with that, and let's have this car running. I'm not... I am looking forward to it, but I'm not at the same time, because there's so much that rides on it. There's so much that can go wrong. And I want to, I want it to go right. I'm so, so eager for it to go right. So let's see how it goes anyways. And just for anyone who was wondering why I did that little uh, trick there with the fuel rail where I backed the, uh, the fitting off on the end. If you can imagine a system that's closed, you try and pump fluid into that closed system and it's air locked. So the, fu the fuel will go nowhere. So although I, I primed the pump the first time, I knew there would be no fuel getting up here because that system would have been full of air. Now I know I've got a good supply of fuel at the rail, which should hopefully speed the process up of starting the car. Right, the nerve-wracking big day has arrived to hopefully get a tune out of this engine. So the first thing you'll see us doing on the video is I'm going to remove this cover. I'm going to take all the plugs out. We're going to turn it over with no plugs in, with the fuel pump disconnected, just to see if we can get all pressure. So I've got an all pressure warning light on the dash. As you know, I don't have the clocks in yet, so I don't have the all pressure gauge. But if the light goes out, that gives us a good indication that we've got all pressure. So we'll prove that first, then we'll put the plugs in and go through various things we might need to do to get it running. The plug leads, for starters, might be on in the wrong order, so that might be something that holds us up. But uh, fingers crossed, and let's hope it goes well. Right, we've had it turning over. We've got a little bit of a metallic -y kind of sound, which we think is the starter motor engaging on the uh, flywheel. But we'll, uh, we'll give it a try now and hopefully make a bit of progress. <laughs> The light went off. It did. It took a few seconds. Ready? Stop it. It stayed on for about maybe five five seconds or so, and then it went out. So if we open the throttle, I don't, can I do it that way? Ah, it does not step on motor, is it? No. That should be it there. I would say. I don't know because they've been used. I have to do each one though. I do want to jack this up, though, isn't it? Are there? Is it? That's oh, that's there. true. Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> Smiling at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that was literally the first start, people. Let's watch that camera then. <laughs> I'll just fire it up now, Tony. I'll just, it's tighter. No. It's gone off the camera, so it doesn't make it right to the moon. Well, I'll leave you with that then. It should fire right up now. Or the hawk. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
say I am absolutely over the moon with how that went. I was so nervous to build up to it. I had a list in my head of all the things that could go wrong. Leaks, uh, you know, timing issues, no spark. You know, there's a whole, whole manner of things that could go wrong. And on the day we had no leaks. It fired up first time. I didn't even need to adjust anything. As you've seen the footage as it started there, that was the actual first attempt. It wasn't like you watch these TV shows where they turn the key, it fires up instantly. That was exactly how it went. It literally turned over for about 20 seconds, 15, 20 seconds, and fired right into life. And there was a bit of a, a metallic -y kind of sound, as I mentioned earlier, which we think is the starter motor engaging with the ring gear. For whatever reason, it made that noise to start with, I don't know. If you listen closely at the start of the start of video, uh, when it fires into life, you can hear it kind of grind and then almost instantly it stops and it didn't return after that. It was fine and it started, started up multiple times after that without any issue. So I don't know what it was. I'll probably have to investigate further just to make sure that there's nothing um, major going on inside the bell housing. But I'm absolutely over the moon. No major issues. There is one slight issue where you rev it, it revs beautifully, it revs cleanly, but then as the revs come down towards idle, the engine gets a bit of a bit of a wobble, a bit of a shake, and what we think that is, or what we're hoping it is, is the uh, the map, because it's really, really over fuel, and when we took the plugs out at the end of the day, they were very black sooty, not black oily, but black sooty, which indicates over fuel, and so obviously a good roll and road session will really sort that out, and I'm hoping to get it out as soon as we get some dry weather because it's done nothing but rain here recently. I'm hoping to get it out round the block, to do a couple of uh, trips round the block. Uh, a massive thank you to my best mate, Andy Buchanan, who you see in the video, who helped with uh, getting the car running on the day. And believe it or not, we actually started it with a little ride-on lawnmower tractor battery. What a fantastic little battery that was. It, it held up all day. The big one I had, uh, or the big one my mate gave us to try, I think it, it must be knackered because we, we charged it and it wouldn't hold charge. But the little one done us proud. So yeah, it was, a, it was a really, really fantastic day in the end. I went into the house on that particular day, really, really buzzing. The fact that everything went fine, there was no issues at the end of the day, there was no leaks. I'm, I'm absolutely overwhelmed because there's got a lot, a lot of work gone into this build and it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter 
how much time, effort, love, care or attention you put into a build, you still cannot guarantee that you won't have issues. You, you know, it doesn't matter how good you are, you can always have issues. So the fact that we haven't so far, fingers crossed, is, is a massive, massive achievement for me. I'm really, really chuffed to bits about that. So then, what's next in terms of videos? Well, it isn't over yet. I've got quite a few to put out still. The first one will probably be a short video, uh, just finishing off all the little bits and bobs. I've got loads, well, I'll say loads. I've got a couple of really small jobs to do that I can probably put a small video out. I'm hoping to do a video of, uh, of driving around the housing estate just before I get it all set up. So I'll hopefully use my mate's uh, GoPro and we'll get some footage at the throttle bodies, at the exhaust, different angles as we, as we go for a drive. And I'll put a video out about that hopefully in the coming weeks if we get some dry weather. And the other video that I'd really, really like to do, and it's down to you guys if I do it or not. I don't know whether I have enough subscribers to do what I've got planned. It's something I enjoy watching when I watch other people's YouTube videos. Whenever a build comes towards the end, I really love to see a good question and answer session on that build. Because to me, it gives you a more in-depth understanding of the, of the build, the questions that you had in mind that you've been thinking, oh, I wonder how he did that, or I wonder what he does for a job in, you know, in, in his, his everyday jobs, things like that. The things that you, you wonder about when you watch a full build. It gives you a bit, a bit more personal touch, you know, you get to know the person a bit more and the build a bit more. So what I will say is, if you guys want to see a question and answer session on the build, if you could please uh, drop me some questions that you'd like to know the answers to through either YouTube, Facebook, if you just put, say, Q&A and then ask the question. If I get 15 or more questions, I'll do a and a video. It's something I really would like to do. But obviously, if there isn't their interest, if there isn't the interest to do it, I won't do it, obviously. But if you guys would like to see or would like to answer, ask any questions, I'll quite happily do a Q&A session on the build. So that's it for this episode, guys. It went really, really great. Um, I can say I'm absolutely overwhelmed. I'm still overwhelmed. Today is the day after the day we fired it up, and I'm still absolutely over the moon with it. I really am. Um, it's, it, it's blown me away. And I'm hoping as we progress and as we go along, things are only going to get better. We're going to get it roll and roaded. That will be another video to come as well, by the way. The roll and road session. Probably not till early next year. Uh, but we'll get a roll and road session as well. And we'll get some good driving shots and uh, good shots on the road when I can finally get it MOT'd. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Thanks very much for all your support, for your fantastic comments all the way through the build. It's been amazing. I've enjoyed doing the YouTube videos. I really have. I've enjoyed the build. Um, I really, really am blown away by everyone's comments all the way through. And I'm pleased I did the YouTube thing. I'm pleased I went and, and, and documented it all through YouTube because uh, it's really spurred me on as well. So thanks to you guys for that. So guys, until next time, hopefully not too far away. Thanks for watching.